Hello everyone, I'm Raphael and welcome to my channel, Network Engineer Pro. In today's video, I'm going to show you a cool and easy way to make sure that certain hosts in the same broadcast domain or VLAN aren't able to talk to each other, so blocking inter-host communication on the same network. The feature is called Protected Ports and it's very similar to private VLANs but easier to implement. You'll also hear Protected Ports referred to as Private VLAN Edge. We'll take a look at the theory of how it works and why you would even use it, then we're going to hit the command line for a scenario-based configuration lab and get Protected Ports configured in action. Action. If you want to follow along with me, you can right now. I'm actually sharing the EvenG topology file and initial configs on my website, networkengineerpro.com forward slash free labs. Don't worry, I put the link down in the description. So go download it, get it ready, and let's lab together and feel free to share it with your friends. At the end of the video, if you found those resources helpful and you want to see more, then don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. It really helps the channel grow and reach more people. And the goal is to help as many people as I can. All right, let's get started. Okay, so by default, when you connect hosts to a switch in the same network or VLAN, assuming that the hosts are configured properly, then they should be able to reach each other. So this human resource PC, HR1, should be able to talk to HR2 and HR3, no problem. They should also be able to reach their default gateway, like a sub interface on a router, for example. By default, all of these ports on the switch are considered unprotected. So I'm gonna put a U here on each of them. But depending on the environment, security policies may dictate that these PCs should not be allowed to talk to each other. Maybe they're sensitive materials and they don't want any unauthorized file sharing between the hosts. The application they use is somewhere out on the internet in the cloud and that's the only resource they should be talking to. Let's also say for example that HR1 accesses something malicious out on the internet by accident. This now compromised PC, if it's able to talk to HR2, and HR3, guess what? It can spread and compromise those hosts as well. By configuring protected ports, also known as private VLAN edge, we can easily isolate these hosts from communicating with each other and limit unauthorized file sharing and limit the potential attack surface of a compromised PC. The configuration of protected ports is really easy. Once you've identified what ports should not be able to communicate to each other, for example, Giggy01, Giggy02, and Giggy03, all you do under interface configuration mode, all you say is switch port protected. So if you want to make sure that HR1, HR2, and HR3 are isolated and they cannot talk to each other, that means unicast, broadcast, multicast, completely isolated from each other, then all of those switch ports should have switch port protected configured. Now, once you do that, all of these ports are gonna be now considered protected. So I'm gonna put a P under them. They're all protected ports now. What about this interface here, the Gigi00 on the switch? Well, that's how they reach their default gateway over on router one. You don't wanna configure protected there because protected ports cannot talk to protected ports. So we'll leave that port there, Gigi00 on the switch, unprotected, which is the default. Now, if you're trying to remember what can talk to what, let's draw it out real quick. So like I said earlier, the default for all the ports on a switch, they are unprotected. So unprotected ports are able to talk to unprotected ports. Unprotected ports are able to talk to protected ports. The only combination that results in no communication between the hosts is going to be protected ports and protected ports on the same switch in the same VLAN. If for some reason this switch had a trunk link connected to another switch and a host hanging off this switch, if you were to configure protected port here and these three ports, Gigi 01, 02, and 03 were protected, it's not gonna work. They are still gonna be able to communicate even though they're all configured as protected. Again, because protected ports is only local to the switch. So protected ports are able to talk to protected ports on two different switches. If you want protected ports to work, they need to be on the same switch. All right, so we're finally ready for the configuration portion of this lab. And what I wanted to do was just take a moment to explain to you the EvenG topology file that I'm gonna be sharing. Now, the link to this topology file is gonna be in the description of the video. So be sure to download it, get it uploaded inside of your EvenG virtual machine, share it with your friends, and let's learn and lab together. Another cool thing is that if you put your mouse over here and you click picture, 
I have a picture of the lab topology. Now you click over here where it says lab and here is a picture of the topology with the objectives here. And what's really cool is I went ahead and mapped out the actual nodes to the icons on this picture. So all you have to do once you open up the picture is if you want to access router one, just click right here in the diagram. It's going to open it up. Boom, router one's open. Let's go ahead and do the same thing for the switch. Look at that, it already opens it up to your terminal emulator that you have set up with Eve and G. That's pretty cool. Let's go ahead and open up HR1. It opens it up. Let's do the same thing for HR2. Do the same thing for HR3. Again, all you have to do is click on the picture. It's automatically mapped to the specific nodes and you have all of your uh, nodes open here. And you can have this little window here if you wanna look at the diagram as you lab. All right, so let me close this really quick. And I have three PCs here, HR1, HR2, and HR3. I'm actually using the virtual PC simulators that come with EVNG, right, the VPSCs. I could have used three routers and give them an IP address and have them act as a host, but these are really quick to set up and they're very lightweight. They connect into a switch and the switch connects up to a router and this gig 00 interface here is going to be the sub interface that's acting as the default gateway for these three PCs. So if you look in the upper right hand corner, we have some more details about our switch port protected lab. We can see the actual IP addresses for HR1, HR2 and HR3 what ports they connect to on the switch. And we have our sub interface gig 00.10, which has an IP of 10.10.10.254. All three of these PCs are in VLAN 10. Now our objective says that new security requirements for the human resource subnet. Configure switch port protected in such a way that HR1, HR2, and HR3 are unable to exchange unicast, broadcast, and multicast traffic between each other. They should only be able to reach their default gateway 10.10.10.254 on router 1. Verify that the IP reachability requirements are met using ICMP, so ping. So what it's telling us to do is to make sure that HR1, HR2, and HR3 cannot talk to each other. We should not be able to ping between those three PCs. Those three PCs should only be able to talk to their default gateway, which is this sub interface gig 0.0.10. Now, as far as what's configured so far, just the basic device uh, configuration, IP addresses, VLANs, things like that. But before we get started and configure switch port protected anything, let's verify the current state of the network. Let's make sure that everything can ping each other before we even start. So on HR1, what I'm going to do is I'm going to ping HR2, I'm going to ping HR3, and I'm going to ping my default gateway to make sure that I can reach it. So 10.10.10.2. Perfect, I get a response. Let me try HR3. Perfect, I get a response. Let me try my default gateway. Perfect, I get a response. Now we can get started. So let's hop over on switch one. And what I wanna do, I wanna go to configuration mode. So enable, config T. Now the first interface I wanna do is interface gig zero slash one. And to configure switch port protected, it's super easy switch port protected that's it now we haven't really done much because only one interface is configured with switch port protected so gig 0 slash 1 is now a protected port it's a protected interface let's go ahead and configure gig 0 slash 2 so what i'm going to do i'm going to say interface gig 0 slash 2 switch port protected the last interface that i want to do is interface gig 0 slash 3 switch port protected. Perfect. Let's go ahead and make sure that HR1, HR2, and HR3 cannot reach each other. From HR1, I'm just going to hit a up arrow and I'm going to ping PC2. Uh-oh. We have timeout. Looks like there's uh, no reachability between HR1 and HR2. That's exactly what we want. Let me try PC3 or HR3. All right, I cannot reach HR3 as well. Let me try reaching my default gateway. That is what I am supposed to reach. Perfect, I get a response from my default gateway. So very easily, we made sure that HR1 and HR2 and HR3 
cannot reach each other, but they can reach their default gateway. We've met the objective. Let's do a verification command to make sure that the switch port protected feature is turned on. What you can do is you can do show interface gig zero slash zero, or let's do gig zero slash one in this case, switch port. You're getting a lot of information about the actual interface. And what we care about here is that the protected status says true. So if we want to kind of limit some of this output because it is a lot, what you can do is show interface gig zero slash one switch port pipe include protected or pro. There we go. The protected state is true. Let's do the same thing for giggy zero slash two. Giggy slash two protected is true. Let's do the same thing for three. Perfect. Protected is true. Let's try gig zero zero. Remember that's our uplink to our default gateway and we didn't configure switch port protected. So it should be an unprotected port. Let's verify. Perfect. Protected is false. We didn't configure switch port protected on gig zero zero. And that's exactly what we want. All right. Just for funsies, I want to show you why you want to be careful what interface you configure as protected. Remember, gig zero zero on switch one is the uplink to our default gateway. You don't want to configure switch port protected there. If not, nothing is going to be able to communicate on the switch between the protected ports. Let me show you. So let me get back into the switch. I'm going to go to config T and I'm going to say interface gig zero slash zero. Again, that's our uplink to our default gateway. I'm going to say switch port protected. Now, now that we've configured switch port protected, is HR1, HR2, and HR3 going to be able to ping the default gateway? Let's find out. I can now no longer ping my default gateway. Let's try from HR2. HR2 cannot ping its default gateway. Let's try from HR3. HR3 can also not ping its default gateway. That is because we accidentally configured the uplink as switch port protected. You don't want to do this. Let's go ahead and remove it. No switch port protected. And let's run our pings again. Perfect. I have a response from HR3 to the default gateway. Let's try HR2. Perfect. That's looking good. And let's try from HR1. Again, that's looking great. So you want to be careful and, you know, plan what interfaces you don't want to talk to each other and what interfaces need to. So that's a really cool and easy way to make sure that these hosts on the same switch and the same VLAN are isolated from each other. Okay, so that's it for configuring protected ports on Cisco switches. That was pretty easy, right? We saw how to get it configured with the switch port protected command under the interface configuration mode, as well as how to verify it using show interface switch port. I hope you found this video helpful and learned something. If you did, don't forget to like the video, comment, and subscribe. That's all for now. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day and lab on.